Hi, my name is Rebecca Parr, and I'm here to talk to you today about sport variables and stress urinary incontinence in nulliparous collegiate athletes. The University of Indianapolis helped fund my attendance at this conference, but that is the only financial disclosure. The number of female collegiate athletes increased from almost 30,000 in 1972 to more than 280,000 athletes in 2019. As more women are playing sports, greater attention must be paid to health concerns that may differ from their male counterparts, such as stress urinary incontinence. Female athletes are affected by stress urinary incontinence at three times higher rates than their non-exercising peers. These women are much more likely to continue to have urinary incontinence later in life, start limiting their physical activity and exhibit greater severity decades later with worse quality of life scores. Stress urinary incontinence is very common in female athletes, yet many lack the traditional risk factors for its development, such as being obese or having multiple vaginal deliveries. Studies to date have focused primarily on prevalence rates and investigations regarding etiology have displayed mixed results in this population. Additional research is required to better understand the risk factors in this population. Thus, the purpose of the study was to explore the influence of specific sports characteristics on stress urinary incontinence in female collegiate athletes. This study of nulliparous female collegiate athletes will address the following four research questions. Is there a significant difference in stress urinary incontinence between athletes who play high impact sports versus those who play a lower medium impact sport? Is there a significant difference in stress urinary incontinence between athletes who play high intensity sports versus those who play low or medium intensity sports? Is stress urinary incontinence related to training volume in athletes? And is stress urinary incontinence related to athlete demographics or training variables? To address these objectives, a non-experimental cross-sectional study was designed. Um, the study was deemed exempt from the Human Research Protections Program Review. Inclusion criteria for participants include nulliparity, female sex, age 18 to 29 years, and current participation in a Division II college sport. Three Division II universities participated in this study. Athletic directors or member of the athletic director, or I'm sorry, the athletic training team forwarded the study invitation to each female athlete participating in the 2020-2021 academic season. The email invitation described the details of the study, provided contact information of the lead investigator for any questions and included a link to the study. Data collection occurred in January 2021 to February 2021. Data was collected using Qualtrics, an online survey platform. Participant demographics such as height, weight and age, type of sport played and years of participation, and a self-report of disordered eating were collected. The International Physical Activity Questionnaire, the IPAC, was used for physical activity measures such as intensity and volume, and the International Consultation on Incontinence Questionnaire Short Form, the ICIQ UISF, was used to classify stress urinary incontinence. Once data collection ended, data was exported from Qualtrics to SPSS for analysis. 209 athletes answered the survey in full and their data was available for analysis. The mean age of the sample was 20.19 years with a BMI of 23.74. 35.4% of the sample reported stress urinary incontinence and 57.4% reported disordered eating. Variables failing to show significant relationships included disordered eating, intensity of physical activity, years of sports training and weekly training volumes. But variables with the statistically significant increase in stress urinary incontinence were high impact sports, high intensity activity greater than five days per week, and an athlete BMI of greater than or equal to 25. The prevalence of stress urinary incontinence in the sample was consistent with rates found in previous literature. Training volume, years of training, and disordered eating did not display clear relationships with stress urinary incontinence in this study. While BMI is not an accurate indication of body fatness, it does accurately reflect the increased weight relative to height of the athlete, which can affect pelvic floor function. 
Consequently, the greater weight on the system may predispose an athlete towards stress incontinence, much as it does in the non-athletic population. Performing impact activity creates large ground reaction forces. As the pelvic floor musculature acts as a shock absorber for the lower extremities, it follows that an increase in impact could overload the continence mechanism. Thus, women who participate in high impact sports display greater rates of stress urinary incontinence. Intensity alone did not display significant findings. However, the athletes in the study were all exercising at fairly high intensities. Thus, there may not have been enough variation between the high and low intensity groups in this sample of collegiate athletes. When intensity was examined in conjunction with frequency, a statistically significant result did emerge. It is possible that the high frequency of exposure to intra-abdominal pressure from intense exercise six or seven days per week had a cumulative effect resulting in a synergic overload to the pelvic floor musculature, decreasing the ability to support the continence mechanism. Thus, the combination of high intensity and high frequency could be considered a risk factor for stress urinary incontinence. This study confirms that stress urinary incontinence is highly prevalent in liparous female athletes. Athletes most at risk are those with a high BMI or those engaging in high impact and high intensity activity six to seven days out of the week. These athletes have a greater need for pelvic floor muscle training to improve and maintain pelvic floor muscle function to prevent stress urinary incontinence. Pelvic health specialists should work closely with collegiate sports medicine to help develop an appropriate program for teams to incorporate into their strength and conditioning routines. While pelvic floor muscle therapy would be beneficial to all sport team strengthening programs, it should especially be included for those most at risk for the prophylaxis and treatment of stress urinary incontinence. Here are my references and my contact information. Thank you.